Hey Facebook, Jason here. So excited to be with you all tonight as we get ready to talk about how to get the most out of your flight training. How can we work to start to get the most out of each and every flight lesson? How can we work to make each and every flight hour really count? How can we save time and money, not just as a private pilot, but moving forward even with our instrument rating, commercial certificate, whatever it may be. That is what we're really after here. You've always hear me say that we're not out to just make current pilots. We're out to really and truly make proficient pilots. That's what we're really after. So I'm so excited to have you all on this Facebook live stream. This is our last one, at least for, who knows, a, a month or two till we hop back on here and do this. But this entire month of January, we've been sharing just some of our best tips here with you on Facebook Live. So you can really just learn more and, of course, promoting our online ground school and the great offers we have there. So just some very neat things for you with that. A little bit now about how this uh, uh, kind of is going to work and a little bit about myself here uh, just for those of you who perhaps might be new to what we're doing here. Uh, my name is Jason of course uh, was named AOPA Outstanding Flight Instructor or Outstanding Flight Instructor by AOPA uh, in 2014, 2015 and in 2016 and approaching now nearly 10,000 hours of dual given time. That's actually instruction time which is just very cool to even be able to share that with you guys and share kind of that uh, that amount of experience hopefully transcends over to you all um, and we help over 1200 pilots per month with their written uh, knowledge test really is what they should be called and with their check ride so just something uh, neat with uh, with that to be able to share with you all there as well um, our online ground school, complete private instrument, commercial pilot, all video based. If you've seen our videos on YouTube, you've seen our videos on Facebook, you're going to love inside of the actual online ground school to check out there for you. Up to now eight books and counting. You can see six of them here. I'm actually giving away all those books uh, this entire month of January. More on that a little bit later. How this works, and then we're going to dive into the contact, content. What's going to happen is I am going to present, just like you're seeing me here now. I'm going to present to you all. Now, you can ask your questions at any time. When you see me looking over this way, well, it's not because I'm ignoring you or looking off camera. It's because I'm over here reading your questions. Hey, Robbie, Herbert, uh, Ron, I see a bunch coming in here. Good to see you guys. Brett, uh, awesome. Matthias, good to see you. Hey, Clay, good to see you. Awesome, Brian. So I can see all you guys over there as well. So uh, I can see those. Billy over there can see those. Matt, Russ, Ashley, Hunter, Tom, John. We can all see all those comments. So you'll get a response from one of us uh, as well with that. So very neat. This also is being recorded. So if you come in late or have to leave early, you can always catch the recording. It'll be up on YouTube and certainly right back on the Facebook page once this is all finished. And this won't take you know, to share what I'm going to share with you tonight, it's going to be one of our shorter presentations. We're going to talk for about 20, 25 minutes, then I'm going to answer your questions and work through it. But I want to start with a question for you all. What does it mean to get the most out of your flight training? What, just so I can gauge kind of who's out there tonight, what would you hope to gain from this presentation? Just so I know who I'm talking to and how I can give you the absolute most value. What does it mean to you when I say the words, get the most out of your flight training? Because I imagine, depending on where you're at, it could mean anything to anyone. So uh, Robbie says, it's safe and well-informed. Chad says, I don't want to waste hours and money. We've talked about this, right? Time and money are the biggest killers of flight training dreams, aren't they? So absolutely, we're going to certainly talk about that, Chad. Clay says, walk away, the best pilot you can be, absorb all of the curriculum. Awesome. Jaden says, becoming the best pilot I can be by, and spending the least amount of money. How can I get the best education possible, yet the best education that's the most affordable as well? 
We're going to share a lot about some of my money-saving tips, which go in perfectly with exactly what you're saying. Absolutely. Making my hours count towards future ratings, becoming safe, knowledgeable pilot, um, buy my own airplane, save cash, no more renting, always learning. These are all great, great uh, things to really strive for. And I want to start out now first with a few facts here. Did you know the average private pilot has 85 hours on check ride day? How is that even possible? You think, geez, gosh, the FAA says the minimum is only 40 hours, right? How are we more than double the FAA minimum? Now, I'm not saying everybody out there goes out and gets it right at 40 hours. That's not what I'm saying here. But I'm saying, how can we be double what's actually required here. And this number, I did a similar presentation of this about a year and a half, almost two years ago now. And this number has gone up since that last presentation. That number used to be in the low 70s. It's gone up uh, almost, you know, 12 hours there. The average private pilot spends $12,500. And I have that third bullet point there says to not be fooled by deceptive marketing. Here's what I mean by this. This is going back to if you're just looking for a flight school, perhaps. It goes back to, you're gonna get that nice brochure from a flight school. Not every flight school does this. I'm just sharing this as a general rule of thumb here, but some flight schools will quote you a price based on the FAA minimum of 40 hours. And oh yes, if you do it in this airplane and you fly the minimum FAA 40 hours, this is how much it'll cost. But we know the stats that the average private pilot has 85 hours on check ride day, spends 12 grand. I mean, that number, we, how can we shave 30, 40, 50% even off that number? I know that sounds crazy, but we're going to talk about some of these money saving, time saving tips because we opened up this Facebook live stream asking, what does it mean to you to get the most out of your flight training? Time money, safety. If I cover those three things tonight, I believe that's going to be a win for everyone. And that is ultimately our goal. So let's, let's not hold anything back. Let's dive right into the content here and let's start with some money saving tips and let's dive into money saving tip number one. A very good friend of mine, his name is Eric Crump. He's the director of aerospace for Polk State College. I was sitting at one of his, his seminars because a good pilot's always learning, right? I may give a lot of seminars, but I find time to sit in on other people's seminars as well. And one thing he said that has stuck with me to this day is that the airplane is a terrible classroom. And you hear that. And when someone puts it in the, the, the words like that, you say, wow, it, it makes sense. You are hurtling through the sky at 90 knots. You are forgetting things as your CFI is telling them to you, leaving them back there 90 knots ago, right? Problems that are occurring. The airplane is a terrible classroom. You see, the airplane is used and should be used instead to demonstrate the skills that you've obtained. So what I teach, you see in that second bullet point there, is learn everything you can on the ground. Learn everything you can on the ground and then go up in the air to demonstrate. Every two hours on the ground saves you one hour in the air. I cannot make this up. Those of you who are active in your flight training, reach out and help some of those and give them some affirmations here. This is correct because you've been there, right? I see what Austin said. Use your flight sim, especially if you're IFR. Absolutely. Time spent on the ground is so valuable. But here I was early on in my training. I was a 16 year old kid kind of working up towards my solo and I didn't care about ground. All I want to do is fly. That's the fun part, right? Flying. Flying's even more fun when you understand what's going on. You can be successful with it, right? It makes you feel good to have that sort of success. But when you fall behind the airplane because you weren't up with your ground studies, you realize that the airplane truly is a terrible classroom. Let me share with you that last bullet point there says my dream student. When I was, you know, just in it eight hours a day instructing students. And I dealt with all types of students, all types of learning styles. I had 
a few students that would come to me that I would call my dream students. Now keep in mind this is back before you know, basic med and everything else, so, so some verbiage here has changed, but you'll get the essence of it. My dream student came to be medical done and in hand. My dream student came to me written test, knowledge test, past, done, and in hand. Ground school is complete with the exception of going back in and doing some check ride prep here and there as we get close to that. My dream student came to me with all that knowledge they have so we can now focus on the fun part which is flying. Let me add one more thing. My dream student came to me with a budget in mind or the cash set aside on hand because we've all been there. I've personally been there where you're kicking butt, you're moving through the certificates, you're moving through the ratings and all of a sudden cash becomes a constraint and flight training comes to a screeching halt. And the longer you go without flying, the more money it's going to take to ultimately catch you back up to it. I always encourage those pursuing new certificates, new ratings, to set aside at least 50% of that so they can get started, get some momentum going, afford to fly twice a week, and go about it that way. Because if you've been there before, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that when cash will stop you if, if, it's, a, if it's a barrier. It's just, we have to have that set up as well. My dream student has the budget, the financial plan, or the money set aside to make it happen. Their medical in hand. Their written test done. So now we can focus on the fun stuff, which is flying. It's a huge money saving tip right there. Remember that the airplane's a terrible classroom. Learn everything you can on the ground. And listen, you're doing it already. You're spending time here with me tonight. You've probably seen some of our YouTube videos. I see a lot of you are already our online ground school members of this. You know, you guys are, are living it. And this is why I don't worry about you guys. This advice is just affirming what you already know. Check the box, right? It's those who aren't on this Facebook live stream or haven't seen our YouTube videos or other people's YouTube videos for that matter that you worry about. It puts a damper on flight train sometimes. Let's look now at money saving tip number two. Tell me if this has ever been you. Having a flight instructor issue. Maybe it was you clashed with your personalities. Maybe it is just a scheduling issue. There's so many factors that go into it. You have to remember that Looking for a flight instructor and choosing a flight instructor is one of the most important things you can do to save time and money in your flight train and hinge the success of your flight training lies in that flight instructor. I cannot stress this enough. You should be going into that flight school, and this is how it, it worked out for me. And you know, I had a great flight instructor for private instruments. She was awesome, very hard on me, but because she cared. But how it worked was, I walked into the flight school, I said, hey, I want to learn to fly. They said, hey, this is Mary, she's available right now, you guys go fly. And Mary was my instructor. And I got just, I drew the lucky straw, everything was great because Mary was an awesome instructor for my private and my instrument. So I moved on, did collegiate aviation and kind of moved on from there. I got very lucky. But we do over 3,000 support tickets, phone, live chat email support through m0a.com in a month and we hear some horror stories and maybe you've had or going through one of those stories right now where you're with an instructor going man I don't know if this is right it's almost like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship you're like how do I break up with this person because it's just not working out it's costing me money I'm frustrated I don't want to go to the airport that shouldn't ever be the mindset right it shows you how important it is to pick a great CFI. You need to go in and interview that flight instructor. Don't just stroll into the airport like I did. I got very lucky that I, I just was handed a great flight instructor because that's how it works so many times, just handed an instructor. But you need to interview that instructor to make sure they're gonna be a good fit for you. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna sit down here because this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, you need to chat with that flight instructor. When you're talking to them, 
the first thing I always want to chat about is that schedule. What days are you available to fly? Well, you need to know that first and foremost, what's going to work best for you. Because let me give you an example. I like to fly Monday through really Thursday, and I prefer, I'm an early morning guy. Four o'clock, like that's when I wake up. So if you want to fly at 6 a.m., that's awesome. I'll be out there at 5.30 and we'll be pre-flight and ready to go. That's just me and my personality. I like waking up early. I like flying during the weekdays. That may not work for you. You may say, Jason, I have a regular nine to five job. I can only fly Saturdays and Sundays. But you know what? I mean, we're a young family. I mean, Saturdays and Sundays, that's my only time to spend with Ashley and Ella and just our family. So that just doesn't work for me. We wouldn't, it'd be difficult. I'd be making compromises at home and it just, it would be very difficult for everyone involved. You need to make sure you have a CFI that jives with your schedule. But you need to know your schedule. You need to be able to go in and say, hey, listen, every Tuesday and Thursday, I can get off work early. So Tuesday and Thursdays, 4 p.m. That is my time. And that's how you really need to approach it to get yourself to commit. Now, not everybody has that same kind of schedule where they can do that, but if you can, that's the way to do it. I loved when a student would come to me and said, Jason, every Tuesday at four, I'm yours. Don't you schedule anybody else? Until further notice, Tuesday at four, I'm your student. That was easy to schedule. I like that as a flight instructor. If you can set up something regular like that as well. Next question to ask. Hey, what is your pass rate? And I'll tell you, this may seem like, geez, that's Jason, that's a tough question to ask somebody, but every flight instructor knows their pass rate. And here's how I know that. If you as a flight instructor get below or start to dwindle towards less than an 80% pass rate, I'm not speaking from experience, I'm speaking from hearing stories. If you start to get less than an 80% pass rate, the FAA, comes knocking and says, hey, Mr. So-and-so, I noticed you just had two students uh, fail their private pilot check ride. Is it them or is it you, the flight instructor? Who needs the additional check ride? Maybe we should do a, a, a follow-up or a recheck on you and your CFI ticket. And it happens. Every CFI knows their pass rate because there's that magical 80% number that no CFI wants to get near. Make sure they know uh, and you can ask their pass rate. Another thing, how many students have you had? And understand, every CFI has to start from the bottom, right? My first student was a, was a guinea pig. And you need to go into that. No, maybe you don't mind being a guinea pig for a new CFI. There is nothing wrong with a brand new flight instructor. Because a brand new flight instructor has just that fresh knowledge base. They're fresh out of ground school. They're fresh out of a check ride. They're excited about flight instructing. But there's something to be said for the instructor who has a good bit of experience as well and can teach more from stories and combine that great ground knowledge they, they obtained maybe a few months ago, a few years ago as well. There's pros and cons to each of that. But it comes down to that scheduling issue. And two, how do you work with their personality? You guys know my teaching style because you hear me here, you see myself in all these YouTube videos, and you know how I teach, but I'm also, I have a lot of cool tips and tricks and those sort of things, but I'm very broad stroke of the brush, big picture kind of person. I've had some students who are the engineering types that want to know every detail about how's the horizontal component of lift being affected now, and what about the vertical component of lift, and tell me more about this, and then we're getting the lift-drag ratios, I'm thinking, I'm just trying to get you soloed, and you're giving me your commercial pilot thesis, it feels like, or you're going to be a flight instructor, this kind of knowledge level. So it just depends. What's your learning style really like? And then right now, especially as the economy is doing well, probably the most important question to ask is, what are your goals? This is you talking to that flight instructor. What are your goals? Because airlines are hiring like crazy right now. The military just announced this week that they're short on pilots in the Air Force. NetJets, all these companies are so desperate for aviators. It's a great time to pick up a career in aviation, that's what you're thinking. But you need to know and ask the question, 
hey, what's your goal? Because I, I just want to know. I am okay if you are trying to get hired on by Delta. I just want to know, am I going to have you for the next three months while you do my private pilot certificate? Because losing a flight instructor puts a huge damper on flight training. As a aspiring commercial pilot, I had eight different flight instructors. It's no way to earn a commercial pilot certificate. And it, the airlines were hiring like crazy. I had one instructor for one lesson and then a new one the next lesson. But did we do that last lesson? Because this guy left in such a hurry, he forgot to check off a few things. So I'd have to go back and end up just costing me a ton of money. My commercial certificate was more expensive than it should have been because of having so many different flight instructors. It's okay. Your instructor is going to have ambitions to move on. They're not going to be an instructor forever, perhaps. There are very, very few people do that. Uh, and my goal, by the way, is to be that instructor forever, just where my passion is at, to do that, make an honest living at it. But that's not for everybody. They want to go out and be a corporate pilot, be an airline pilot. I just want to know, hey, are you one phone call away from if Delta called you, are you going to training next week? That's all I want to know. And it's a, it's a fair question to ask, especially with how crazy hiring is going right now for the airlines. So again, that CFI should be working for your business too. And I'll just show some of those questions that we talk about. Questions asked, what days are you available to fly? What's your pass rate? How many students have you had? The scheduling issues, all, all that stuff. What are your aviation goals? Hopefully you're writing this stuff down so you have it here. But choosing a great flight instructor is just one of those things that can truly make or break your flight instruction. Money saving tip number three, please write this down. I'm going to stay seated just because if, if I stand up, I'm going to be jumping around because I'm very passionate about both these topics here. Money saving tip number three is this. Please be sure to get a pre and post flight brief. I can't say that enough. A great CFI will give you a pre-flight brief and a post-flight brief. If you are not getting a pre- and post-flight brief, your CFI is doing you a disservice. Now, they probably aren't doing it maliciously. Most CFIs have a very good intent. They might just be doing it because they don't know. Maybe you've never asked them. A pre- and post-flight brief, I'll pay for a pre- and post-flight brief. They take five, 10 minutes on either side, before the flight and after the flight. That's all it really takes. Let's start with the post-flight brief. Let's just say we did a great lesson on steep turn, slow flight stalls. We come down, we do our post-flight brief. I normally did it as I'm filling out the student's logbook. I say, listen, run me through the flight in your mind. And the student goes, okay, so we took off runway 36. We went out to the practice area. I did my clearing turns, everything else. We went straight into steep turns. So, okay, how do you think you did on the steep turns? Well, I think I did okay. I was a little sloppy here. And, you know, my turn to the right is so tough. And I'll say, you're exactly right. And you have to remember that turn to the right. And I just go in a whole dissertation on how we could have improved that steep turn to the right. Steep turn to the left was awesome. Kudos to that. But here's how we can work on the steep turn to the left. And then we brief how slow flight went, how stalls went, what went well, and what we can do better. And then most importantly, we share what we're doing next. If you're in a 141 program, you know this because you know what less is going to be next. But oftentimes in part 61 programs, we don't always share what's going to be next. So I share at the end of that, I say, listen, um, we're flying again on Thursday. Let's do some pattern work. You're getting real close to solo. I'm confident how your slow flight looks. I like to see good slow flight before I solo a student. Let's spend the next lesson in the traffic pattern. So I need you to go back, watch these videos in the ground school, study this, this chapter of this book, and chair fly all those traffic patterns and work through them, because I really want you doing radios and everything else. You now have a homework assignment. What's anyone who's excited about aviation gonna do? You're gonna go home and take action on that homework assignment and chair fly your traffic pattern and everything else. We're going to talk about chair flying here on the next slide. But you go through all of that and then you show up and we do a pre-flight brief. And oftentimes I do it while you're actually pre-flying. I'll walk out there and say, hey, go ahead and not to distract you. If I'm a distraction, just tell me to stop. But 
Talk me through your traffic pattern. You say, okay, well, I take off, I, you know, my heels hit the floor, my toes to the bottom pedals, full power. We, we take off, I make sure I'm flying that runway straight out. And, you know, 300 feet from traffic pattern altitude, I'm turning. And we just, we kind of just go through everything here. We go through this entire traffic pattern. You talk me through it. I say, that sounds great. You know why we do that? Because the airplane's a terrible classroom. We discuss what we want to do in the air on the ground because it saves you time and money. And that's the ultimate goal, right? We work through that process with a pre and post flight brief. We're going to come back to this idea. So I'm going to keep moving forward. Money saving tip number four. We already led into it. Chair fly everything. I'm already sitting down. So let me chair fly something here with you. Let's chair fly a power on stall. So you sit down in your big comfy chair. And we pretend we've done our clearing turns. We've made our radio call. Everything is good. We're getting ready to do a power on stall. We're doing it in the 172. I'm sitting in the left seat, let's say. One hand's here, other hand's on the throttle. All right, power on stall. I'm simulating that I'm taking off. I pitch up way too much, end up stalling the airplane here. So I bring the carburetor heat on. I bring the power on back to roughly 1,500 RPMs. I want to maintain the nose about where it's at just so I don't lose altitude, right? But I want to start bleeding off some of that airspeed. As that airspeed slows down to my rotation speed, I see it. I smoothly put the carb heat in, smoothly apply full power if that's what my CFI wants or 2200 RPMs, whatever they want. I apply that power. I bring the nose on up. I can feel the controls kind of getting sloppy. Up, up, up. Hey, there's the stall warning horn. And here comes the stall and the brake. Full power is already in there. So it's simply help that nose come down, break the stall, build up, build up that airspeed, bring the nose back to level and we're recovered. You can chair fly your emergency procedures. You can chair fly your flight maneuvers. You can chair fly your radio calls. Just like I said, in the traffic pattern even. To give you an example, I'm gonna stand up here without getting all tangled up here in my, my microphone. We've had some of our customers, and it's, it's very neat, go out with their spouse's permission, I'm sure, and go out in the yard and spray paint a runway or in the driveway with chalk and draw a runway. And they'll, they'll literally walk on, like physically, it's, it's not chair flying, it's, it's standing and walking. They'll go and, hey, um, Danella Marion County traffic, Skyhawk 7159 Quebec's turning left cross on runway, you know, 23 Danella Marion County. And they walk around their yard. They walk around their driveway. They draw this runway out and practice those radio calls. Say, okay, a beam like touchdown point, carb heat, power pack, 10 degrees of flaps. And they take it all in there and learn it all there on the ground and then go out and apply it in the cockpit. And it sounds a little bit silly, but I promise you, it's students who go above and beyond and do th things like that that end up saving the most time and the most money in their flight training. So those are four great money saving tips for you. And I wanna share with you this whole idea of what we've been talking about is how can we now maximize each flight lesson? You said that, hey, to get the most out of my flight training, I wanna save some money. We check that box. I wanna save some time. You've seen even as saving money it, a byproduct of that is saving time because time is money, especially when a Hobbes meter is ticking away, right? And lastly is to make yourself the safest pilot possible, but also have, still have a healthy wallet, right? So you can afford to go out and rent or afford those club dues, whatever it may be to continue flying. To maximize each lesson, it comes back to like what we said, that post-flight brief. If you get nothing else out of this, and we've shared some great information with you tonight, a post-flight brief is going to save you so much time and money and allow you to maximize each and every lesson. You see, when you go into it, and part of a post-flight brief is to help you know the outcome, know the goal for every flight or lesson. You see, in your flight training, you want to know the goal, know the outcome. You want to know... What does it take from my, for my flight instructor to see to check the box on this lesson? Say, yes, Jason completed that. We're good to go. We're ready to move on to the next lesson. What does it take? What's the goal we're striving for? So I learned that in the post-flight brief from the previous lesson. So I can study and commit to that study plan and really work through it that way. 
but knowing that goal. Now, there's some of you on here tonight that, Chase, I'm already a private pilot. I'm kind of thinking about doing my instrument here. Um, you can still go into each and every flight having a goal or knowing that outcome of that flight. I share with my online ground school members, hey, landings, you should just, gone are the days of just being thankful for getting down on the runway safely. Every landing, the goal should always be centerline. Every landing, you should always have a point picked out that, hey, this is my aiming point. My goal is to touch down there. Too many of us just get excited. Oh, I'm down. You know, a good landing is when I can reuse the airplane again, walk away from it, right? These types of things. And that, it's a funny joke we use in aviation. But truth be told that every flight you do, should have an outcome. We've been doing a cool thing with our online ground school members. I, I shared it last night. We do, a, we do a Monday night webinar. Every Monday night I do a stream like this, but locked down just for online ground school members. And um, in there, we've been sharing like this idea of being your own flight instructor. And that may not be the right verbiage, but it's this idea of creating a syllabus for yourself, knowing your own outcome, the difference between being a current pilot and being a proficient pilot. These are the line items that we're working to share with everyone. You see, you have to know the goal. You have to know the outcome of every flight and lesson. And lastly, you have to commit to a study plan. I opened up this Facebook Live by saying a, a very profound phrase. And when, when it hits you, it, your flight train will never be the same. That, that idea of the airplane is a terrible classroom. When you really understand that and really commit to, I'm going to learn everything I can on the ground. My neighbors are going to think I'm crazy, but I'm going to draw a runway in my driveway and stand out there and look silly and talk to myself. But you know what? Think of it that every lap around that fictitious runway you drew in your driveway just saved you $25 every lap. Think of it that way, because you're saving time and money in your flight training. You're making yourself a better pilot doing it. You struggle with flying to new airports, and you struggle with the idea of picking out new runways. Go pick, draw the taxiway diagram of this new airport you're going to in your driveway, and walk out and approach it from the direction you would approach it from, and say, oh, this is what it looks like. Oh, okay, 3.6 is gonna be over there, 1.8 is gonna be, over. okay, I can see this. If I'm using 3.6, I'm gonna overfly the field and enter a left down and, and practice these different entry types. That's what we're after. It, it, it's gonna look silly, but I promise you're gonna save time and money. But it comes down to committing to that study plan. So if you are currently pursuing a private pilot certificate, an instrument rating, a commercial pilot certificate, I encourage you to allow us to be your mentor, to be your guide in this journey. This entire month of January, I'm giving away all my books to our online ground school members. If you're a current online ground school member of ours, or if you sign up during the month of January, you're getting all my books for free in addition to our in-flight emergencies course. We're a full private instrument, commercial pilot, online ground school. You love our free videos we put out there on YouTube. Imagine when you see the paid content to see in the cockpit with us here. It's membership based. When you become a member, you get access to all those courses. It's not just private pilot. It's not just instrument. You sign up for one membership, you get access to all three courses. It's knowledge test prep. It's check ride prep. It's safe real world flying. The URL is groundschoolacademy.com. Click on enroll now, join now. You can choose which membership level is right for you. You can start anytime, you can cancel anytime. The average person takes a month, month and a half, two months if you, if you're, you know, have a regular nine to five job, month and a half, two months to get through it, and you can cancel at any time. So factor that into it. Okay, you're gonna spend two months at this. So what is that compared to another course if you're price shopping, whatever it may be? It's groundschoolacademy.com. Like I shared, it's complete private instrument commercial pilot courses, weekly member only webinars. If you love these webinars we're doing with you this evening, we do them every Monday night with our online ground school members. It's a chance to interact with myself and our great team here in a much smaller environment every Monday night. If you're a gold member, you get our crazy pass your check ride or I'll pay for it guarantee. It's written and check ride prep. And most importantly, it's flight training mentorship. And it's really a community. We're truly here for you all. 
with that. So groundschoolacademy.com, sign up to get that crazy uh, bonus as well. Um, geez, it's $355, I think, if you added all those items to the cart. Uh, totally free, just for becoming a, uh, a member, or if you're already a member, it's my late Christmas present to you. So groundschoolacademy.com, that ends January 31st. Obviously, the course will still be up. You can still join it. Just this killer bonus of getting all my books for free ends January 31st. So um, be, uh, be mindful of that. And I'll be emailing you about that so you have that as well. Let's move to Q&A now. Any questions you all have? I know there's a lot of you on here. I know I missed some of you. Ron, excited to have you in the ground school. Can't wait to see you in there, my friend. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's answer some questions here. Anything, Mark, excited to have you on there. Um, and uh, again, I'll, let's take some questions here. I'm, I'm here for you guys. Let's go back. I saw a good one. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris, with the K. I really appreciate that. I need to scroll back down here. Matthew had a great question. Okay. And just please, I already know where this is going with this question. I will always be 100% real with you. Um, I hope I don't step on anyone's toes, offend anybody. You will always get my honest opinion, and that's what we're, we're, we try to be genuine with you. So here's, well, I lost Matthew's question. Let me go uh, back here. Uh, I'd really like to hear your thoughts on flight training for us uh, pilots in major aviation universities and dealing with come and go instructors, unrealistic times, push to get a license certificate. Um, I get it. And I, I bring a, a unique perspective to this because I did both. My private, my instrument was part 61. My commercial, my CFI was 141 at a collegiate university. And both have their pros and cons. Part 61, part 141. It, it, when I teach, I jokingly say I teach part 61 and a half. I take the best from 141, which is structure and syllabus and, and everything else, and the best from part 61, which is freedom and flexibility as well, and kind of mash them together. What I worry about is this, and I am making a very general statement. I'm not calling out any one particular place. It's a very general statement that there are some places, and they're not aviation universities by any means. Um, most are outstanding organizations, but there are some places that concern me that people use terms like pilot mill, where they just simply do in-house check rides. You are taught only to pass the written, you're taught only to pass the check ride, and you're just not taught the real world skill. You are being prepared to pass a test and nothing more. And those places scare me. Will you get your certificate? Absolutely. Will your certificate look exactly like mine if we held them up next to each other? No one would know the difference, right? But you just have to be careful at some of this. I like people to get real world experience. And that is, again, I'm not naming any names, so, you know, but you just have to be careful. Are you being prepared, uh, was it Matthew, to just pass a test? Or are they really prepared to make you a safe real world pilot here? Uh, just some of my concerns with that, my friend. Maybe I took your question further than you, you, you thought, but that's that. So um, good uh, stuff. Uh, Josh, absolutely you can use an LSA aircraft to get your private pilot. Certainly you can. I mean, there's uh, generally, yes, there's obviously some, some stuff uh, in there as well, but um, um, certainly with, uh, with that. Um, uh, Chris, um, I'll let some of our current online ground school members answer that. He said, Jason, how does your training compare with Glime's online ground school? I love the Glime guys. Uh, we are good friends with them. They're just up the road from this. They're very, very good people. I would never in a million years talk bad or anything like that about a competitor. So I won't do the comparison. I'll let some of our customers do it. Uh, and maybe some of the Glime guys are watching too. Uh, Paul and Garrett, they're all great guys over there. It just, I look at it like this, like we're all working to make aviation safer. You know, that, that rising tide lifts all boats. When aviation wins, we all win. So I, I don't get big into competition types. I'm very competitive, don't get me wrong, but I would never say a bad thing. Like I, I like all those guys. I would never say anything so, but some of our customers can certainly uh, chime in with that. Elijah, no. Um, now, if you're going for a private pilot, can you solo with that medical still pending? It has to be done. Um, yeah, Tamaz, I think you're, um, 
I think you're, you're right uh, with that. Timothy said, does your online ground school have practice tests for the written? Absolutely it does. So I always say, yes, you're going to pass your knowledge test with flying colors. You, we actually have, for gold members, we have something called the FAA written test prep boot camp. So even beyond the ground school, see, the phrase for a ground school gets misconstrued. People think, I need a ground school to pass my written. But our ground school, yes, you're going to pass your written. And but we're gonna take you further into your check ride. Yes, we have the practice test, but I never want you to just memorize questions. I want you to truly work through it, right? To know why. I don't want you to realize, oh, when I see this question, this is the answer. I want you to know why. So yes, we help you pass your written. Yes, we help you pass your check ride. But most importantly, we help make you a safe real world pilot. So, um, uh, Robbie, the videos just stream online. The reason is, the reason it's a membership, the reason they stream online is because we're always updating it. Chris with a K, a lot of these guys, Brian, will all tell you that the course is always changing. We're always updating videos. It, in our Monday night webinars, you are always up to date. We had world famous Uncle Larry. Have you seen the basic med video we did? The moment we knew enough about basic med, we did a Monday night webinar with our online ground school members. Our online ground school members are the most informed pilots out there because the course is always updated and the webinars are always on the most relevant information. It's, I see Brian and Chris with the K posting some good stuff there. So um, thank you for that, guys. Um, Jaden said, best flight training scholarships. There is a very good friend of mine. His name is Carl Valeri. And if you just go on Amazon and search aviation scholarships his book comes up it's it's cheap i can't remember how much it is he publishes it every year and it's like 600 pages of aviation scholarships um it's worth the ten dollars you're going to spend to buy it. i promise carl valeri is his name he's a jet blue captain and just does this in his spare time to help fellow and future aviators out just search aviation scholarships on amazon buy it in kindle format and you'll have it tonight uh, and start taking action on that um Um, yeah, Louise, you're absolutely right. Talk about the CFI. Yeah, so if you're a flight instructor watching this, um, you're, as a flight instructor, you can go in. I'll use Louise as an example. And you can say, hey, when did Louise last log in? Hey, Louise, I see you got an 80 on this test. That's awesome. But you got a 65 on systems. You want to spend some time talking about systems? Hey, we're changing the oil next week. You want to come back out and we'll take the cowling off. We'll show you everything. And the CFIs can see that your progress through that and kind of help you with that as well as we're doing virtually as well. So it's really neat um, with that. Um, David said, how does one get back after years? I was 60 hours solo, but personal issues knocked me out. Now trying to get back in after a long time off. David, with 60 hours especially, the skill will come back to you. What, what's going to take some more time to come back to you? is the knowledge, my friend. You're gonna need another written again. I would approach it this way, David. You are going to have that skill come back to you easy. But I would march into a flight school, interview some flight instructors, tell them your situation, say, listen, I've got 60 hours, but that was a long time ago. Treat me like I'm a brand new student because I'm gonna know some things, I'm not gonna know some things, right? Treat me like a brand new student. I'm gonna pick, pick up on it very quickly and let's knock this thing out. If you don't have a copy of our book, The Private Pilot Blueprint, which kind of takes this webinar and expands upon it, it's a free book, you just pay shipping, I can ship it out to you, privatepilotblueprint.com. Uh, so you have that there as well. There's been ads on Facebook, perhaps you've seen it, but privatepilotblueprint.com. Uh, Billy, you might just post that link in there so people can see it as well. Um, and um, there's that for you guys. So good stuff uh, there. But man, you're in a great spot. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't sweat it one, uh, one bit here. Um, Cool, Clay, uh, thank you for sharing that. It's, it's, yeah, 10 bucks on Amazon for that scholarship book, absolutely. Um, Michael's like, I can talk more about the first cross country. Boy, can I ever. My, <laughs> we don't wanna hear so much about my first cross country. I'll, I'll, uh, that, my whole flight training was a, a book in itself, it seems like. Um, your first solo cross country, is that what you, well, I'll just do first solo uh, cross country. Um, it is, nerve-wracking in a way because you're you're just nervous but your your cfi wouldn't sign you off if you were not prepared for it because it's his or her ticket on the line all the same um you want to be over prepared in a manner that don't rely just on the ipad have a backup sectional chart don't rely just on gps have backups to everything fly it once i when i was act like really instructing eight hours a day i would fly to that airport they were going to duel with them and back 
get out of the airplane, do their paperwork, let them use the restroom, grab a snack, and then they would go do it solo. So it's like just fresh in their memory, they'd go back and, and do that. So um, that's the course of action to take with it. But be humble when you go into it, but confident all at the same time. So some good stuff. I see some more... Um, more um mike thank you so much man excited to have you on board some more rusty pot questions again if you have not seen our movie i see mike chris a few others brian mentioned it if you've not seen our movie flying again make sure you go check that out i don't know if i have a a copy billy would you mind running around and grab me a copy of flying again sitting you'll see the dvd over there or john do you have an easier copy um there we go perfect billy you ready to make your big on camera debut billy's hand everyone um, if you don't have a copy uh, of Flying Again, grab yourself a copy. Full feature length, 83 minute documentary we made working with um, eight rusty pilots. Ariel Tweedo is one of those rusty pilots uh, from Flying Wild Alaska. Just a really great, some inspiration uh, to get you back in the cockpit uh, as well. And we can ship that out to you as soon as tomorrow. That's all in the store uh, as well. So um, good stuff. Um, Curtis, we're, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to do some more Facebook Lives. It won't be this regular. This, the reason we did so many in January is really to um, kind of share with you all um, just some great information. You know, do our, our big – we do this book promo once a year. Like, I do it in January. Any current members, new members get all our books for free, and then I don't do that the rest of the year. That's kind of our, our big promotion for the year. There's other stuff we do here and there, but nothing this big. Um, so that's kind of doing these live webinars. And it's just a chance to interact with you all. I mean, uh, I'm so lucky to meet so many of you at, you know, seminars and Oshkosh and Sun and Fun and everything else. But some of you, you know, we, we may not ever meet. So we meet virtually like this. And it's just a great opportunity to learn more about you and, and how hopefully we've played a small role in your big success with all that. So that's always the goal of some of these two here. Um, Paul said, Jason, I have a little over 40 hours still, have a lot of soul and cross country left, have flown a couple months due to good old time and, time and money, man, you're right. The weather has also been awful. Any advice as to the most efficient way to finish up? Should I try to fly a couple days per week or fly more often over a shorter period of time? So my goal, Paul, is always to have somebody fly at a minimum twice per week. In a perfect world, it'd be a Tuesday and a Thursday. You try, I mean... Could it be a Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, it could, but I like a little more space in between the flights as well. But if that's what your time allows, that's what your time allows. I like that because, Paul, you know that you're going to show up on Tuesday and the weather's going to be bad. But there's always hope for Thursday. Or you show up on Tuesday and there's a maintenance issue. But there's always hope to get it fixed by Thursday. Whereas if you only fly on Tuesdays and you cancel Tuesday because of weather, it's now two weeks go by, technically, until you're flying again makes it very difficult to get back on that. So my friend, and I've done this with people when, when they're in your situation, like if you've got the time at work to take some paid time off and say, listen, this is my week to commit. Like I'm going to fly Monday through Saturday, take my check ride on a Sunday like that. Let's, let's make this thing happen and get it done. Certainly, and it just depends on you. If that works for your learning style, absolutely. Or continue to chip away at it twice a week if you can. You are so close, though, my friend, and I can tell you've got a, got a passion for it. And, and, you know, when you have these goals and you have these passions, we find a funny way of making them happen. And I can't wait to read an email from you one day knowing uh, that you made it happen, my friend. But commit to a schedule. I always tell people the best way to get the written test done, the knowledge test done, is to call up the testing center and schedule it. Because when you call them, they're going to take your $150 and they're going to want to know a date. So I tell people, like, if you want to do our private FAA private pilot written test prep boot camp or instrument pilot boot camp, it's, it's 12 videos. I always say, listen, call the testing center and schedule it for three weeks from now and watch a video every night. You find a way when you have a deadline that's very difficult to reschedule, you find a way to get the study and time in and get it done, right? Get it scheduled. You're struggling to get a check ride done? Schedule it. You'll find time to make up those hours and everything else. Just some different, uh, different stuff. Uh, is it okay to practice approaches in Bravo Airport? If they'll let you, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, you, you can. Um, just depends how busy they are that day, right? Um, let's see. Uh, AJ asked, where's 5-9 Quebec? Uh, so 
there'll be good news coming out here soon. Uh, Five Nine Quebec's in the paint shop. Five Nine Quebec is switching to two three Mike Zulu new tail number. I'll explain why probably in a future YouTube video. Um, we are getting a beautiful new paint job on it right now. So just to catch you guys up on our world, I just yesterday was it? Yeah, yesterday repurchased my baby Five One Two Romeo, which really started all this that you see. I mean, when I was 18 years old, I bought 512 Romeo, Cessna 150, um, flew it, started my flight school in it, um, and then really kind of, um, it began to start costing us a lot of money. Ashley and I were newlyweds. We didn't have a whole lot of money. Ended up selling the airplane to make ends meet. M0A.com started really picking up, started making good money again, and uh, bought 59 Quebec, which is the plane I used to do traffic in, and just recently, now five, six, almost seven years later, was able to buy back the airplane, the Cessna 150, that helped us start it all. So we have the 150, 512 Romeo. We have 7159 Quebec, the 172, which I have thousands of hours in from doing when I was a traffic pilot. So two airplanes that just uh, mean so much to me, you know, um, that's getting a new paint job and new interior and getting its tail number switched to 23 Mike Zulu. I'll be sharing more on that in a YouTube video. And then we have the Technum uh, as well, which is down at the Sebring. Uh, sport aviation expo right now so lots of cool things uh, happening one man with three airplanes you could I have a really cool wife who just is understanding of this airplane obsession apparently so very neat stuff here um, James said how much is the check ride written it depends I've seen check rides as cheap as 400 I've seen them as expensive as 600 written tests 150 bucks uh, that's pretty standard um, so let's see here um, Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for all the all this stuff, man. Really, really uh, means uh, mean, it just means a lot to like see all these positive comments and everything else. Uh, to I really mean it. Like to to be a player, you know, to to, to play a role in your success. Um, when I see you guys are so passionate about this, it just it means the world to us. I mean. I share, you, share with you the story about when we were so broke, we, we had to sell our little 150 just to like pay rent and make ends meet to then be like where we're at now with 11 team members and just growing and reaching so many of you. Like it's, and we couldn't have done it without you guys. We were just so blessed and so gracious uh, to, to do this every day with you guys. I mean, it, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's late here and everything else, but man, this is, this is why we stay up late is, is for you guys. The goal is always to make you safer, smarter pilots. Yes, you're going to pass your written test and we'll help you do it. Yes, you're going to pass your check ride, we'll help you do it. But my goal is to make you a safer, smarter, real world pilot. And I just don't believe there's enough real world instruction out there. And I will always be real with you. I will always tell you my honest opinion. That's just how we are here. And it may step on some toes. It may offend some people. But uh, I will always speak the truth to you guys. So that's just hopefully you feel that, uh, that connection. So let's take a few more and let's wrap this thing up. So Because uh, I do have a, uh, a wife and a two-year-old, a pregnant wife and a two-year-old home. Little one expected in April. A, hopefully an after son and fun baby. That'd be, that'd be good. As opposed to an at son and fun baby. That'd probably be a problem. Um, Let's um, see here. Oh, Nathan, I would love that, my friend. Nathan, let's shoot me an email on that because I want to make it back up. That's Falcon Field, right? I need to make it back up there because uh, Clay's in that. There's a lot of you guys in that area. I need to come back up and visit here. Um, let's see. Uh, Derek said my check ride. I was asked every question in the book. He's talking about the private pilot check ride. Um, pass your private pilot check ride. Absolutely. Uh, very high test score. Thanks to you. Awesome, Derek. Very, very cool. Very, very cool, my friend. That's exciting stuff. Um, awesome, awesome here. Hey, Lee, good to see you on. Hope you and the family are doing well. In old uh, chilly South Carolina. But yes, absolutely. Absolutely here. Um, Tyler, so excited to have you on board. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. Uh, Paul, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a, hey, Joel, this, okay, you guys don't realize this. Joel on here, Joel is like, Joel is my aviation mentor. This is, that's the man right there. He may be a little crazy, but that man knows how to fly an airplane. He taught me everything I know. So he's watching this laughing going, I remember back when Jason couldn't even land in a 12 knot crosswind. That's how Joel talks. If you knew him, it'd make sense. <laughs> 
Cool. Um, but yeah, the, the, when, once the paint job's done, I see Lauren some others asking, once the paint job's done, I'm going to do a video about it. I'm, I'll share numbers with you guys. Like, I, I, you guys want to go on to be aircraft owners. I'm, I'm honored and, and happy to share that with you guys, just so you can kind of start to budget for this. If you want to be an aircraft owner but needs a paint job, what can you kind of plan for? So just good stuff like that. So um, uh, that's awesome. But uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Muhammad, I have one on the private pilot check ride. Go look at our Facebook videos. So just uh, two Facebook lives ago, I did one on what to expect in your private pilot check ride. So go uh, watch that. Cody, I'm going to do an entire one on how to buy an airplane here soon, but I like the idea of buying an airplane during training. I, the best time, though, is like in between private and instrument. And I'll be sharing why on that webinar, but earn your private pilot, buy an airplane, and then do your instrument in it. In a perfect world, that's why I really like to... Uh, uh, see so um, and Chad yeah we did a full paint uh, we it was stripped to bare aluminum and paint as opposed to a paint over just it just makes more sense with that so um, <laughs> let's see so um, I'm laughing at Joel's comment here so um, cool awesome guys listen if you need anything else um, the team uh, Hunter and some others will be on the live chat a little bit later on mzeroy.com if you have more questions you want to reach out so about we have live support from about 9 in the morning to uh, 10 11 o'clock at night so uh, that's there for you guys so well email support phone support don't hesitate to reach out I know I can't get to everybody but don't hesitate to reach out with your uh, just your questions, your comments, we're here for you guys. I truly mean it when I say you guys are the reason we get up so early, stay up so late, do all the crazy things we do while we do it for you to help make you a safer, smarter pilot. If there is anything, anything at all we can do this week to help make you a safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Enjoy the rest of your evening and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. See ya.